Hey guys, it's Agonis Delmar again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue with the Azure Cognitive Services. We did an OCR video previously where we pulled some data from images. We're actually we're doing optical character recognition. We got all that working and then now we need to bind the two objects so that we can use it in Unity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind it to some objects and also display it in the canvas so that you can see how we can deserialize the data coming from Azure into Unity. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is going to be making use of the data that we're getting back from Azure. So I show you how we can get information from an image by calling into Azure Cognitive Services and basically pulling the raw data that we're getting back in JSON. But, you know, having raw data is not always the best case because you're going to have to, you know, it's going to be really hard to use this in Unity, especially if you need to bind it to an object or, you know, do some things with it. Maybe you want to display it in a UI or you want to pass that to another service. You know, there's just a lot of things that you might need to do with the data. So if you're just dealing with strings, I would recommend that you don't use your strings. You use objects once you get that data back. So what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be analyzing the data that we get from, from Azure and then creating objects that are going to support that data set. So the reason for that is because I want to be able to bind that to the canvas and basically display that in a, in a friendly way so that when we're doing analysis, we can see the data showing up on the canvas. So if you remember, I created a new tab here, and, and this tab shows you the data that we're getting back from, from Azure. And, and we can analyze it, and we can, I, can, I can tell you what we need to do. Because when, you know, when you're looking at JSON, decomposing JSON and converting it to an object, at the beginning, I'm going to be honest, it was really hard for me to, to understand really well. But now, now I understand it in a way that, that I think I can explain it. And we can go and basically deconstruct this. And, and take it and turn it into an object that is going to be easy to deserialize, meaning that we're going to get, grab the data in raw string and serialize it to an object. So we're going from a string to an actual object that we can use in the code. So the first thing that I'm going to do, we're going to start simple because I think this is going to be the best, the best way to teach you this. It's going to be a starting, you know, at the higher level. So Anytime you're dealing with JSON, you want to, you know, you want to make sure you understand this. So anything that has a curly brace, that means that is an object. So this right here, it's going to be an object, meaning that we're going to have to match that signature, these attributes in a in a in an object in C sharp. If you look at if you look at this bracket, that means that it is a list. Anything inside that list is, that has a curly brace is going to be an object. So I know that regions is a list of objects. Every object in, in, inside of regions has an attribute called bounding box. It also has an attribute called lines, but then lines is an array. It's an array of objects. Those objects also have an attribute, and it also has an attribute called words. Words is a list. So we're going to have to create multiple objects to support this. So I'm going to show you how to best do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. And this is normally something that I do anytime I need to bind to objects. So the, the core I'm not going to touch, that's going to be the REST client core, but we're going to be adding a new folder here. And this is going to be, we can call it contracts or models. You know, I've seen it, I've seen it so many ways. We can just, in this case, we can just call it models. I think that's, that's fine. I don't want to be fancy. And then we're going to start creating objects in here. So I know that I'm going to need some kind of OCR response object that is going to hold everything. So I could create a new class and we can call it, we can actually just call it Azure OCR response. Perfect. And that's going to represent this object right here, the whole thing, like I was saying. And then the other thing that we're going to need to do is I need to make this serializable. So I know that I need to bring in the an namespace from the system. And then this is going to be serializable. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do, and this is something that I normally do, I paste that object at the very bottom. I don't I don't need to paste the entire array. I can just do, you know, one item in that array. And then I know it's going to complain about syntax problems, 
well we can just comment it out and let me go ahead and add a comment and now it should be it should compile just fine so this is what i use for you know to have an example let me go ahead and close out of this and then we can focus we can focus on this i'm going to add all the models in here and then all later on I'll, I'll add it into multiple files but for now we can just keep them all here so that i can explain it to you better so if you look at these we need a language right so we're going to need to create a new property and we're going to call it language and i'm going to match everything exactly as this is just to make sure that things are going to work normally i do properties when i'm when i'm using something like neon soft but because I'm using Unity, I know that Unity is going to want to expect this the same way. So let's, I'm going to, I'm not going to do them all. I'm just going to do one and then we can see if we can deserialize it. If it works, we can add more properties. Okay. And then this one is going to be the text angle. But, and also look at the type. The type is very important. In this one, it's going to be a decimal. So I'm just going to say this is a decimal type. The next one is going to be orientation and it's a string. So I'm going to make it a string and i don't believe i have anything else let me go ahead and go back into this i don't think there was anything else on the very bottom nope there's going to be the high higher level objects and then we're going to have a regions object which is going to be an array of objects so i'm not going to do those just just yet we're going to need it in just a minute but let's just start with this and see where this takes us and we can leave that in that namespace i think that i think that's fine okay so now that we have that how can we use it so that's going to be the next question. So now that I have this object and thinking about this, I didn't namespace anything. So let's go ahead and remove the namespace just to be consistent with everything that we have. And then I'll just, there we go. So there's no namespace. We're just going to have a class at the higher level. So it matches everything that we have everywhere else. Okay. So if we go back into our example and if we look at, if we look at the on, on request complete, we know that it's returning data. I know that it's returning a JSON, a JSON object. Sometimes it doesn't work, but for the most part, when we get a successful response, we can get some validation later, but I know like it's working right now. So we can do something as simple as, you know, if we can just validate that we didn't get an error. So we can say if error, we can say a string is null or empty so we know that we you know we didn't get an error and we know that we did get data so we can say a string is null or empty in this case it's going to be a not because i don't want that to be null or empty otherwise it didn't work okay so if we didn't get an error and or or data is populated then we're going to try to deserialize it and this is a part that is cool because i'm going to be able to do something like so the, if you remember this is going to be the data that we're going to be deserializing so if you remember up here we had unity has a json utility to json so that one is to go to json we want to go from json to an object so if we go here they also have something called from json and it's going to ask us to specify what the data is so it looks like it takes a generic which is cool because we can do something like this as your OCR response, response that data. And then the cool thing about this is I can now use an object. This is going to be or Azure OCR response. And if everything works, we should get an object back mapped correctly with the information that we have mapped so far. So let's go ahead and test this. I'm going to remove all the other breakpoints because we don't need to go through all those breakpoints. I know that all that stuff is working. Just remove all those, and I think we should be good. Awesome. And then I'm just going to go into my little debugger here, attach it to Unity, go back into Unity, wait for it to load. There we go. And then we're just going to hit play. And I want to see if the object is getting mapped. I don't need that breakpoint anymore either. And then by this point, we should have already got a callback. Looks like we didn't get an error, which is what we were looking for. We did get data. Let's see if uh, this deserialization is working. We can see if Azure, it looks like it's working. We got the language is mapped to an object. We also had the orientation. We also had an angle. So let's go ahead and keep going. Let's go ahead and add more fields so we can see everything. Okay, so we know that this part is working. So what if we want to do regions, right? But region has a list of objects. So we're going to have to do 
couple more things to this. So I'm going to need another object. And this one is going to be regions. And this one can be called, this one can just be called regions. Let's go ahead and call it Azure OCR. OCR region, because it needs to be singular because when I declare it in here, it's going to be an array. So I like to I like to make it that way. I'll show you I'll show you what I mean in just a second. And then we're gonna need a bounding box. So I know that's gonna be a string. And then we're also gonna need an array of words. So we're gonna we're gonna go come back to that. Okay, so that should cover that. And then before we keep going, we're gonna do now we can do an array. We can do an array of this type, which is going to be regions that needs to match up that property and then that's what i'll do and then the next piece that we're going to need and uh, why is this complaining expect it uh i think i got everything correct bounding box and oh i see i made a mistake i removed that curly brace okay and then so now I know that, and now I'm going to need another object, which is going to be words. And words is going to have an array of things that get captured. And those things that we're capturing are going to be a list of other objects. So that's fine. Let's go ahead and do word. Let's not put anything inside just yet, and I'll show you why in just a minute. And then the last one, it's going to be the actual let me think about this because this is gonna be the actual. Oh, you know what? I think I think this is gonna work. Word can just be. See, even I'm, I'm getting confused, and I do and I do this kind of thing all the time. So we're gonna need a bounding box here, and I'm also gonna need the text that we're capturing. So it's gonna do text. Let me make sure that this is all gonna work. Okay, now so I know that I have this. I know that I have that. I know that I have lines. I don't know that I cover lines just yet. I have regions, which is this. And then, oh, you know what? I think I skip over lines. The region is going to have a bounding box, and I'm also going to need lines. Let, let's add another object. This one is going to be a line. And a line is going to be an array of, let's see, it's going to be an array of this object right here which is going to be a single line. So let's go ahead and add. So in there, I'm going to need, I'm going to need, OK, I see what I, I see. What I, I'm going to need a bounding box, and I'm also going to need an array of words. I'm pretty sure we're going to get it wrong, but we'll fix it. And then this is going to be words. OK, and then words is going to be this type, which is going to have a bounding box, which is going to, I think this is going to work. Let me, let's just go back to it again. So this Azure OCR response is going to have an, uh, basically an array of regions, which is going to, be, going to be that. If we look at the region object, it takes a bound, it has a bounding box, and it has, also has an array of lines. That's the only thing that we're missing, I think, so far. Public, and it's going to be lines. OK. And then, so that should cover this piece. It should cover that piece. The lines are going to have a bounding box, which is this one, and it's going to have an array of words, which is going to be of this type. This type right here is going to have a bounding box. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Okay, so now that I have all that, so let me just double check. Yep, we should be good. So let's go ahead and see if this is going to work, if, if the magic is going to work. So I'm going to, and if it works, we'll, we'll start by moving some of that to the canvas. So I'm going to hit play, and oh, and I didn't, I didn't know how to add the debugger. It probably worked. I just didn't see it working. So let's go ahead and do it again. And now we can do a step out, and we can see. So you can see that has language, in, and then up. The angle worked. Then see, we have three different regions that it captures. We have lines. We have words and text to capture that. We capture that statement. So yeah, I think everything everything works. So the beauty about this is now we're dealing with objects and we're not dealing with you know a string. So now we can do a lot more with this. And let me show you what I mean by that. So now that I have that, what I'm gonna do here is let's go ahead and map, let's go ahead and map a field. 
So I'm just going to show you how we can map a field and then we can we can attach it to the canvas and then you can have more things if you like. So what I'll do here is let me go ahead and make this smaller. I'm going to go into the scene view and then we're going to go get closer. Okay, so here the first thing and I normally do this on every video. For some reason I like to start with black on on this. So I'm going to make this big basically snap it to the same size of the canvas and I'm going to do black on white with white text all right and I don't need to recast that and then I'm just going to change this to stretch perfect so then the next thing that I'll do so this is basically our background or we can just call it a console just to be just to be fancier and then the next thing that I'm going to do is I've been using text mesh pro I like I like it a lot so I'm going to use it in this project let's go ahead and import it See if that works. Can I, oh, okay, because I'm in play mode. Okay, so everything that I did, I lost because I was in play mode. It's okay, we'll do it again. And then just do right image. This was our console. And then I did black. And then I can just change this. I wish there was a way to just say use, you know, use parent size. I don't have to do, there might be, but uh, maybe I'm not. I'm not as familiar with the UI as you guys are. And okay, and then the last thing that I'll do is I'll just oh, it's already changed the stretch. So I think we're good. And then the next thing that I'll do is I'll do the text mesh pro. I'm gonna add a text, I'll import this. And, and the reason why I want to use it is because the text just looks so nice. It makes it a lot easier to read. And it doesn't matter how small you how, how small you go, how large you go, it just always looks awesome. Okay, so I'm going to show you, this is going to be, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into two areas. The, the area on the bottom is going to contain the text that we are capturing. The area on the top is going to contain the, basically the, the bounding box. The, this basically is going to have language, text angle, and orientation. So this one is going to have, you know, everything that we're capturing as far as like text. It's going to go very deep into the into the nested objects. Okay, so this is gonna be that piece. So this is gonna be words capture. This is basically what's gonna be the most useful information, to be honest. And then we can just say words, words capture, text. And then I'm gonna add a header. And then our header is going to contain some of those other properties that I just show you that are more higher level. And then those ones I'm gonna put doesn't need to be actually that small. You can make so it's gonna be header. And I'm used to templating engines, so that's why I add brackets. Okay, and I think I oh you know what I, I sized that incorrectly. Let's do it again. And that should work there. And let me just let me just do that again. There we go. Okay, so that, this one is to be down. Okay, so I'm going to make this one about half size. Perfect. Okay, excellent. So now, now that's correct. So this one's going to be words, capture, text. And then the one on the top is going to be basically, we can just call it header. I think that's fine. And this doesn't need to be say text. You can just say words capture, perfect. And then I'll just move this one right here, and we can make it. We can make it bigger. It's gonna be our header. Excellent. Okay. So now we have two different properties. The other thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on edit script here, and I'm going to close out of these. Let's try it one more time, because I don't remember what the name. I always, I always do this. This is what I need. Okay, and then I'll go back into our little little client in here, and I'm gonna add a couple more properties. So this is going to be the header, and I also need to bring in the basically words capture, which is also a text box. It's gonna complain that it doesn't have it. That's fine, we'll bring it in, and then we'll bring in, yeah, it should be the same on both. Awesome, so now we, we have, basically properties that we can map 
the to the UI. So I, I need to do that mapping. So I'm gonna go into my REST web client and let me make sure that those are getting exposed. And I need to also make them serializable. And serializable, awesome. And here we go, let's just wait, okay. And then what I'll do, I'll just drag it and drop it here to associate it, drag it and drop it. So now we should be bound to the UI. So the cool thing about this though is now I can do I can do this. I don't need to parse any JS any any string. It's just an object. So I can do, you know, my header. I'm going to do something like this. I'm gonna say the text of the header it's going to be. And you guys know how much I love a string interpolation, so I'm gonna use that right now. And we can say okay, the orientation is gonna be, so we can just say orientation is going to be that. And, and this is the value and we can terminate it with a new line if we wanted to or we can just continue I don't think it really matters and then I'll grab the next property so now we're dealing with objects which makes this awesome because you know you can just access that property and then the last thing that I'll do is let's grab also the the text angle which is a decimal text angle so if this was in an angle we would have something other than zero but the text was basically you know aligned normally okay so that works and I have everything okay so then the next thing that I'll do is I'll grab also the properties out of the words for that one, we're gonna have to go deep so I'm gonna go regions and then I also need to say oh and regions is uh, is an array of regions so yeah let me yeah okay it's fine we can we can just loop to loop through this i didn't want to loop through things but we'll just do it i don't like using vars but i think in this case and a lot of you asked me that before dilmer why don't you like using vars and the reason why i don't like using vars is because it's hard to find out what the type is if you hover over it you'll know what the type is but if you don't then you don't know what the type is so for now i think i think it's fine and then Maybe I should get used to it because it is helpful from time to time. And then we can also loop through the loop through lines. So I'm just gonna add another for each. And then I'll just say this on this line, and then we we'll just say region that lines. And then if we look at line, and we can also do words. There's better ways to do to doing this, guys, and just for now I think this works. I'm just gonna do lines that words. Okay, perfect. So now we have words with the information that we need. So the header, it's going to be the first thing here. And oh, which I already have, so we don't need this. What I need to pull in is basically words capture. Okay, and then what I'll do here is I'll be adding to the text. And because this is going to be, so I'm going to be appending to the to basically that. I can do it that way or we can just do let's go ahead and do it this way i'm gonna say words and then start it with an empty string and we can we can just add it append it all at the end basically set it all at the end and then i'll just say words and then i'll show you what i'm gonna do so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say words and then we're gonna be appending to that to to words and what I'll do here, I'll just say word, which is going to be this one. And then let's see if we want, I think the text is fine. We don't need the bonding box. If you want to pull the bonding box, you can, but I can just pull the text. But what I'm going to do is, let's see, let me see what is going to look better. I think that's going to look okay if I do it that way. And I'm just going to do that. So we're going to grab the word that we're capturing from the OCR and we're going to separate it by spaces. We can also separate it by pipes or by any other delimiter that you like. I think that should work. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is let's go back in here. And I know this is going to be, this is not going to be as big. So we can do, I can probably just go smaller on the header, bigger on the one that matters. And then in fact, we can probably just go smaller because I, I want to try other images too. Okay, so now that we have that going, let's go ahead and hit play, see what happens. And we can see how, 
how that's working. So we know the orientation is up, we know that the language is English, and we know that the angle is, is zero. And you can see that everything that was extracted from that image, which is actually really cool. The, the other thing that we could have done so that it's easier to read is we can add a new line for every word that we're detecting. Let's try that again. And I hit play and we can see if, so you can see that we're getting, you know, everything that is getting detected from that image and it looks like we're even going beyond. We can probably just make that smaller. I don't want to work on a scrollable text for now. So what I'll do, I'll just make this like 30 or maybe 35. So it's not that small. And then we can just hit play and we can see everything getting recognized. So let's try a different image just to show you how cool this is. So now I can go ahead and let's just try just try something else. Let's see if I can find another image that I have in Twitter or, or we can even find one from the web. Let me go back here on Indie Games and let's see if we can find one that is, you know, that is maybe Cricket. Like this one right here is a little bit Cricket or like this one, it looks like handwriting. So I think this is a really cool use case. So let's go ahead and copy the image address and then paste it in the image OCR. And let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. And it looks like we we couldn't detect the image. We make sure that image is fine. You didn't detect, so it says not detected, and also unknown. Okay, so let's try. So, oh, I see. It's because, yeah, I think that image. Let's try. Let's see if that. Okay, I don't. I don't think that's a good image. Let's try some. Let's try another one and see if we can find something else that let's see that one looks cool i can also what is i want to get one that has handwriting or or is even in an angle to see if it's going to work so that one is it's very blurry i don't know that it's going to matter as much but let's see i mean let, let's see what it does let's go ahead and copy image address and let's try this again copy image address yeah, I think some of these images I don't trust because they're they're just super large. Uh, sorry, the, the the path is really large. So let me see if I can find. No, let's just try something like this and see. If not, I'll go into my Twitter and we can pull one from. Okay, so I like this. This doesn't have all that weird metadata at the end. Let's try that. I'll just paste that and then hit play and it's okay there we go it just took a little more time you you notice that it took a little more time so it's up it's english is not in an angle and then we're pulling cg the best of and it didn't pull the indie games for some reason it just didn't you know it's not going to be perfect to be honest but we can see if we found it in here if we go ahead and look at the last one yeah, it didn't pull, it just pulled the, let's see, I can see the letter, the word off, but I don't see the the word in the games. So maybe it's not a good resolution. And let's see if we can find, how about this one, it's, it's much larger. I think it's from the same site. Let's try that one. And then hit play and see what we get. And it's still getting captured. And you can say subscribe, blah, 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 new videos. So it is pulling information. And I'm going to do handwriting image. See if I can find. OK, let's see. I think we have a lot of handwriting in here. I just don't want to try one that is, is like super difficult to. But I mean, th these are the test cases that you, that you want to do. So let's try something like this. Nice blog lettering much, okay, and see what the image URL is. Okay, I think that one should work. I'm gonna up, oh, and I don't wanna paste it there, paste it on the right field. And let me try that again because I was in play mode. And let's see, it's getting captured, and it didn't work because it only captured, hopefully I got that right, yep. It only captured M-I-E-L which is this part right here and then el 
Yeah, it didn't like that font, the handwriting for some reason. Let's try one more, and I think I'm gonna call it good. I think for the most part it should work. It's just you know some of those weird handwritings, including mine, <laughs> that you might not recognize. Okay, so that one looks like a good size image. I need to play to stop it. Okay, try it again, and let's see what we get now. Large letters, so it, you know versus and so it did what it could and it didn't it didn't find what that was it's actually really hard to read to be honest let's do let's do one more let's do one that we know that let's see what happens with something like this and then i'm gonna call it good okay oh and i need to hit play again i keep doing that and then hit play and it's and then you can see the top it didn't do secret and let me look at the last call. So it did top and it didn't find the word secret. It's probably because, yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's more testing, but I mean, if you look at, if you do one that is readable, it seems like it's working fine. So if we do something like, you know, banner text, and we search for something like that, something that is clear and, it, and it's easier to read, then, you know, in those cases, let me see if we can find See if it finds that because that's cur a little, it has a little curvature. Uh, so this is going to be, you know, the test, the test that you need to run. Let's try that and hit play. And see, so how to make, and it didn't find the word banners, but it found ERS in Adobe Illustrator. In Adobe Illustrator, how to make, it did find how to make, even though it's also, you know, in a curvature. But I didn't find the word banners completely. But so yeah, so it's not perfect, but it works. I mean, it works really well. And I'm gonna say that this is everything that I wanted to show you guys. And just as a, kind of an overview, I show you how to map the data that we're getting from Azure Optical Character Recognition Service and how we can map it to an object. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you please let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.